Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and in today's episode, we're going to be doing some more work in the V-berth, getting ready to insulate the inner walls, as well as, likely, um, we'll be dealing with some more screws on the deck. It does seem to be our lives these days. So while Deb's going ahead and uh, starting to tear out the inside wall of the hull, uh, I'm now starting to take the trim down off of the ceiling. And all I do is start with a paint scraper or, um, or flat blade and kind of pop it in here and then twist. Uh, these are just held up on this boat with um, small little brads, so they actually pop out really easy. Uh, it takes just a few seconds to get them all around the entire boat taken down. So this isn't exactly the most graceful um, looking scene here, but we pulled the top of the bunks out so Deb can kind of get down inside of there. And she's got a small um, pry bar and she's basically breaking out the edge of the wood so she can get the pry bar under the edge of it and starting to pull some of it up. Uh, having a little tough time so we moved to the other side right along the back side of the chain locker and you can see where this had leaked at one point and this wood this sort of trim wood that holds up the outer um, plywood skin is just rotted completely it's actually really tougher than I thought it was going to be to pull this ceiling down it's just quarter inch plywood that is um, nailed not even screwed to the small little um, two by two supports that are glassed or tabbed into uh, into the roof of the boat here. Um, I guess they, they must have epoxied or glued this along these joints as well. You can see what I'm done is I'm starting with like just a paint scraper or a, a small item to pry or even a screwdriver and a rubber mallet just enough to um, to give it some room to get something bigger in here. So I'd have Deb kind of tug down on it just to give me enough leverage to get a small flat bar into it um, so that I could start to start to get this thing pried and you'll see it's um, it was surprisingly difficult to get out of there and I couldn't even get the whole piece so right over by Deb's hand here uh, it's actually just tearing the plywood right at the spot where it was epoxied to the small beam that kind of runs a thwart ships right here now I was um, I was really surprised at how difficult it was you know I'm just kind of using weight and sheer willpower here to break this piece off of here so as victorious as that felt, I realized I have a lot more to go. So after trying the very back corner piece there and not making a lot of progress, I decided to come up and uh, start working on this one. And again, you, you can just see what I'm having to run into. I, I'm using the, um, the crowbar and I'm having to basically break the epoxy or glued seal all along that small tab piece. Just so that I can get, um, just so that I can get a little bit of leverage, uh, you know, see Deb's using a flat bar along the edge of this uh, this forward companion way and I'm using uh, you know like a 24 inch crowbar on the back side uh, just enough to break it loose in a few areas now at this point we're getting excited we're thinking all right we're gonna get the entire sheet down uh, if we can just you know kinda pull this thing down a little bit and I can work my hands in here to to hammer along that next tab but unfortunately what we're finding here is that because it's glued at every tab it just breaks at each tab So this went ahead and continued and we just repeated the process, pulling down one small piece at a time. Then we heard that noise and it scared the crap out of us. We both went running up top to see what it was. It turns out it was nothing but a shovel that I had had up on the deck that I was using for pulling up some of the teak and the wind blew really hard and it kind of lifted up on this piece of tarp we had and dropped it back down on the deck. But because it was metal, it kind of sounded like we were inside of a bell and somebody gonged it. My initial plan as I was tearing the ceiling out was going to be to try and take it out in full sheets that I could then use as templates to um, cut whatever it, we intended to do afterwards. But you can see the way these are breaking that that's just not going to likely work very well. So I will probably end up making cardboard templates. I moved on from the ceiling and found a small little gap um, right between the, the vertical seam here. So I went ahead and started tapping. I kind of removed a small piece of the, uh, the wall right there around the port. And, uh, and now I'm uh, attempting to do the same thing on the piece below the port. Uh, there is a good amount of space between this inner skin or wall and the actual hull. So I'm going to be able to get at least two inches of insulation throughout this whole thing, which I think is going to really help. 
the condensation that was forming was quite a bit. I'll show you in a uh, upcoming section of this video where uh, the condensation was so thick on the ceiling it pretty much just looked like it was about to rain. I mean, it was you know probably a quarter of a cup of water in about a one foot by one foot section beat it up on the ceiling. Hey, at some point I happen to notice uh, I've got spectators. What the heck? And when I start getting tired of one job and um, I need a break from it, I go ahead and move to another. Now, uh, I don't recommend having a bunch of big projects open and active at one time, but the reality is this deck is a big project and it's not something I can do between work schedule, travel, and frankly mental desire to do it all at one time uh, can. So I'm doing the deck and then in small parts I'm doing other pieces here. So it's good to start seeing that the uh, uh, the V-Birth moving forward, but uh, after getting tired of trying to rip plywood out of it, I decided to go back to uh, vice grips and screws. So we're making a little bit of progress here and just starting to pull some of these out. All right, this is a complete oh look a chicken moment, but as I was going through video, I found the video of us going to a sushi restaurant and we were trying like crazy to teach McKinley how to use chopsticks. She's getting there. Use the chopsticks to push it up there, not your finger. Use the chopsticks. I use my tongue. I know. Use the chopsticks like this. There you go. This was a really crazy week regarding weather. On Monday, my father-in-law called my wife and said, hey, are you guys watching the news? They're, it's a reporting a tornado on the ground in Madisonville. Um, we are right in Madisonville on the river, so uh, obviously it was a bit concerning. Um, Deb and I knew we were supposed to get some severe weather, some chance of thunderstorms, and we contemplated whether we should take the awning down. We decided to go ahead and do so. So we went up on the deck and we were taking the awning down. That's when she got that call. Uh, we finished taking the awning down, bundled it all up, and right as we wrapped up that um, bundling of the awning, we looked up and could see rotation in the sky. It was really scary. Um, uh, you know, the first thing we did, obviously, we got down below, we put the life jacket on McKinley, even down inside the boat, and hunkered down below. Wasn't real sure exactly what we should do. Quite frankly, in, the, in this little piece of video I captured, um, you can hear me saying, I'm not sure what to do, I'm not sure what to do. I don't know what to do. I think it's gone past us. It never looks that severe in the video, but this was scary, and there was a bunch of debris sort of floating in a circle in the sky, but not touching down. Uh, but at the end of the day, we were certainly safer in the boat than we were to try and get somewhere on land. Uh, it was right there without, without you know, warning. And um, the thought was, you know, you could run across the parking lot to your car in, in a vehicle that weighs maybe 3,000 pounds, or stay in a vehicle that weighs 70,000 pounds and is sitting partially down in the water. Uh, so we think so. We think it so certainly was the right decision. The great news for us is it never did actually form into a tornado directly over us. Um, I, I am saddened to say I cannot. Uh, I cannot say the same thing for uh, people in our neighborhood. There were some homes destroyed in this town and in uh, East New Orleans. There was significant damage. Significant damage, and a lot of people lost their homes and a few lives. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at svdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, fellow dreamers.